it's reading 11.7 volts. It shouldn't be. So this is not the typical one, guys. We're not going to be dealing with a, a regular circuit integrity test where I'll show you how to jump the signal to ground and, and jump the signal to the 5-volt reference. And none of that is going to apply here. We have voltage on this circuit that absolutely should not be here at all. Okay, guys, we are working on a 1998 Jeep Grand Cherokee with a 4.0 liter engine. Customer complaint is a check engine light and a throttle position fault code that he's concerned about. Uh, there are some new parts under the hood already. TPS is new. Uh, looks like idle air control is new. I'll get you a shot of those in a second. Here is a shot of the fault codes. You see we have a P0123 TPS voltage higher than max limit and a P0138 downstream O2 shorted high. Uh, the, the code that we are attacking for this video is a TPS fault. So let's go under the hood, see what we got. All right, you can see the TPS and the idle air control valve is new. Let's get a shot of the scan data next and see what this TPS voltage looks like. And that's the main data pad we're worried about right there. This TPS voltage, you can see we're at 4.98 volts right now. Open and close the throttle. You see that voltage is never moving. So we either have a open in the ground circuit, a faulty sensor, or an open in the signal wire. I'm not concerned about the five volt ref. Our reference circuit is fine. And this is just based off of principles. And this would be section seven material in my book that is titled potentiometers. And I also have hours of lecture available on Scanner Danner Premium on this topic where we deal with the signal circuit, the integrity of the circuit, and I show you how to quickly isolate faults like this. What I wanna do first is I want to verify my wiring at the back of the sensor. I'm gonna do three quick voltage measurements unplugged, and then I'll probably do the same thing plugged in. Just touching the front of that. That's my sensor ground circuit. That's at zero volts. Not a valid test with it unplugged. We'll have to revisit that one. This is the middle wire. And what is that? That went off the scale. What is this one? That is five volts. Let me go by wire color here. I uh, can't tell. Tan black maybe. The middle wire is orange. And that's the one that is burying the scale. That's crazy, I've never seen that. It's reading 11.7 volts. It shouldn't be. So this is not the typical one, guys. We're not going to be dealing with a, a regular circuit integrity test where I'll show you how to jump the signal to ground and, and jump the signal to the five volt reference. And none of that is going to apply here. We have voltage on this circuit that absolutely should not be here at all. No way we should have 11 volts on what I believe is the signal wire for this TPS. We can check real quick here. TPS signal is orange and dark blue. Okay, so that's the one. So it is white black is my five volt reference. And that was the one I did read five volts on on the end. I, said, I thought it was uh, tan and black, but it's white black. Okay, so my TPS signal wire is reading that's this middle pin is reading a ridiculous, ridiculous number, 11.5 volts. All right, I wanna show you something else on this Jeep and this may be related. As you can see, this engine computer has some type of aftermarket chip in it. And I remember seeing one of these before. It was actually in, in my three-part Jeep series video and I, I thought that that was my problem initially and it wasn't, but um, something to think about is that piece right there. Okay, so here's, here's what I'm thinking, right? Um, if this is actually battery voltage on this circuit, this is going to light my test light. Ooh. And uh, you guys can take a look at the voltmeter here too. Uh, I'm reading 10.87 volts right now, put my test light on it and that's, no problem lighting my test light. So that is battery voltage. And clearly we would not want to jump that signal to ground 
and watch the computer react to it because we would end up seeing smoke somewhere. Okay, so some of you might be wondering if the signal voltage is reading 10.79, why is the scan data only showing us 4.98? And the answer is within the scan tool on this TPS signal, the maximum voltage that it will ever read is five. And so programmed within it, the maximum it can ever show is five volts. Even though there's 12 volts on that circuit, it's only showing five on the scan tool because of processed data. So that's the answer to that. Don't let that throw you off. The fact is we have 11 volts on this circuit. Well, it's actually 10.6 right now. Ideally, I should turn the key off before I do this. Uh, you wanna do that for me, Danny, please? And we can watch that line too, because I didn't do that. We'll wait five seconds here. Leave the key off. It's still off? Yep. You see that voltage is still staying at 11 volts on my TPS. But this test, this test should answer my question as far as where that's coming from. If I disconnect the computer. Was that just yeah. by me touching that? that? Yep, we touched that one. Look, like at, that. it did too. See how it's coming back up? It sure did. Go. Ah. Spike. So if I move the harness connector up like this, just lifting up on it, you see our voltage is back at 12. And this is with the key off. All right, so our problem is gonna, it looks like it's right here in this piece. Can you try to start this for me, Danny? Yep. I don't think it's going to start based on a no calm and no check engine light. <laughs> Nothing. This battery's dying, of course. So you're, the customer is right, Pete. This thing will not run without that, but check out the TPS voltage in the signal with that removed, right? It's good. Okay. And with that piece plugged in, it actually is sending battery voltage into that sensor, and it shouldn't be. And, and the other thing too, with it unplugged right now, is I have a no communication with my scan tool, it won't communicate, and, and then the vehicle won't start, although my battery's really weak right now. Can you reach in and turn that key off? I wanna look at this connector. <laughs> that pen. Yeah, that is exactly what it is. Well, there you go. That's why the thing's not starting, and that's why we're probably getting 12 volts that's being fed into that TPS circuit. That's probably a main feed. Well, let's try to straighten and see what happens. If the pin breaks, it breaks, right? That pin is crushed. Maybe a small pair of needle nose pliers now. Okay. All right, plugging this connector in. Let's see if this thing starts. Although our battery's probably dead now. Can you see if it'll start, Pete? If it'll start, leave it run. This is my TPS voltage live still. This is live on the, on the scope. All right, and then the other thing we wanna make sure is that our scan tool is communicating. My TPS voltage now on the scan tool, you see it's 0.74. The uh, sweep, 3.991 at wide open throttle, no problem there. Okay, 0.76 live. And four volts live. No problem being a few hundred millivolts off from what the scan tool is showing. Everything is okay at this point. I, I think I'm comfortable to uh, bolt this computer back up and, and we'll leave that chip out and um, 
give it back to the customer. I mean, at this point, we probably could put that chip back in. That pin was bent. And the reason why uh, that happened is that chip doesn't have any locks on it. So how often was that thing unplugged and plugged back in? And um, at what point in time did that pin bend? But, but that's it, crazy one. That TPS voltage being at 11, 11 volts actual and five volts on the scan tool, you know, that's one you definitely wouldn't want to ground to do an integri a t integrity test to because we would have ended up smoking the computer. So I guess the variable there would be, you see 12 volts on a sensor, don't dump it to ground, but that's pretty much common sense. Crazy one. Hope you guys like that.